Okay, good evening, everybody, and greetings. As I've explained before, I'm so sorry that it's so noisy, but I'm actually um, hosting now from a, a cafe in a small shopping mall because we have a blackout at the moment in my area. So my apologies, but I will actually mute myself so that you can actually hear our speaker. Um, Beverly Chu, I think everybody knows who Beverly is, and if they don't, we are very lucky to have her from Canada. <laughs> She's an urban innovation product designer and sales sheet design consultant. We're really going to tap into one of her top skills. She's going to talk to us tonight about designing sales sheets at sell. She'll tell us a true story about how she had a sales sheet that finally made it. Um, the formula is simple, but we've got to get it right. Um, and she's put together a lovely, root yourself winning show. Johan, we've got enough competition, please. Johan, can you can you mute yourself, please? Okay, I've got some standard requests and, and reminders for the meeting. Our meeting for my Beverly, who's our speaker tonight, will take over for the next hour. Please mute yourselves during the session and I shall surely do so. Please say hello to us in chat. Let us know who and where you are from. There's a double reason for you doing that, please. Beverly will probably repeat it, but um, all those who need their email addresses for me, um, I will be sending them an extra bonus. So please be sure to leave your email address in chat. It's a Zoom meeting, so please put on your cameras. I always say this, you don't go to dinner and get a box over your head. So please put on your camera for us. Obviously, as you know, we are not lawyers. So speak to your patent attorney if you need any legal advice. Do not disclose anything that's not already in the public domain, just in terms of chatting. And I've got your electricity rules, okay? So our co-host tonight is Beverly. So if I happen to have a generation, a generator flock, Beverly will take over. Yeah. Our quote for tonight's meeting, don't pitch the idea, pitch the opportunity. In other words, pitch what the idea does. And that will also catch up with, um, or meet up with our speech tonight. Coming up in March, you've got lovely kids cup stuff. Jim Debate is coming up on the 9th. Oh, that's Wilson coming up on the 16th. There's yeah, information about this on our website. And I don't know also who who's going to. Sorry, who's playing music? Could you mute yourself, please? Um, under normal circumstances, after the meeting, I thought we would start a networking for 30 minutes, but tonight it won't work that way. So uh, at least we know about the idea. In our next meeting, we will have a networking session. Uh, without much further ado, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to welcome everybody again. And I'm going to now mute myself so that you guys can hear your song sing. And we can hopefully hear Beverly. It's going to be a lovely participative meeting. She's going to stop and start while we've got a chance to actually do something and learn something very valuable. So welcome, Beverly. I'm in your debt. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation that I just know is coming up. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Thank you, Celeste. I'm just gonna start my screen so everyone can see the presentation. Can everyone see the screen now? Can you just nod your head if you can? That's great, okay, thanks. Morweni, that's my new word of the day. Morweni, Sabana. Johan, please mute yourself. And hello from Canada. I am from here, Vancouver. And I hope everyone can hear me okay. I'm on the west coast of Canada where you see that big white arrow. 
And we're speaking from around the world from very many places. I see some people from South America. And I just wanted to say first time in South Africa. Excuse me, Bev. I'm having a lot of hearing problems in the background. Can someone that can someone mute themselves, please, with the kids in the background? I'm not sure exactly where that's coming from. Okay, thanks. I don't know. I still hear a lot of background sound too. Can everyone mute themselves? Celeste, can you see? Are you able to mute people? Again, please. Are you able to mute people or no? I wonder who has control over that. There's some, some, someone's not muted. I'm sorry, say it again, please. Are you able to mute people? There's someone that's not muted. I'm not talking about Bev. Please. Um, who is it? Is it your hand? That's okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. That should be okay by now, I think. Okay, we'll try again. I've muted him. Okay, thank you, Ridley. Sorry. Okay. So I think every um, I think Celeste had asked everyone to introduce themselves in the chat. If you didn't hear her say that, please introduce yourself in the chat and let us know if you're a beginner at cell sheets, if you've never done one before, or if you're an intermediate or an advanced. I think Celeste also invited some printers so please let us know if you are a printer or if you're just friend friend wanting to come visit uh, the inventors group tonight look forward to seeing you where you are on the map um, once i look everybody up later so if you could put down from where you are in south africa that would be great because i'm i'm learning a few words and i'm learning a bit about your country which has just a wonderful uh, way of greeting people. Celeste was giving me the intricacies of that, so that was very interesting. So tonight's topic is designing cell sheets that sell, and I understand that you also call them A5 flyers. I know cell sheets was kind of a new term to me, and I think it might even have been um, coined by Stephen Key, but in the licensing world, we tend to call them cell sheets. That's just the term that we use, and these are some examples on the right, and you'll be seeing a lot more of these in depth as we go along. So I think most of you are familiar with Stephen Key. He spoke with your inventors group, I think a couple of months ago. And one of his quotes was, your marketing material is probably the most important thing for achieving licensing success. And I think that when we talk about the tools, you'll see where it fits into the invent rights 10 step system. So I'm just gonna review these quickly in case you're not familiar with them. So step one is study the marketplace. And that's where you actually look at what's already there. Maybe your idea has already been invented. Um, invent for the marketplace. That's when if you've seen holes in the marketplace, you start creating ideas to fill that particular hole. Then when you're evaluating ideas, maybe you've come up with five ideas that fill that hole. So you want to um, choose the one that you want to work on first. Then you might prototype that idea. It doesn't have to be sophisticated. It can even be in paper or in clay or in some other tools you find around the home. And here's where we're gonna start tonight, right in the middle, writing the one line benefit statement and designing your marketing materials. Then of course, there's filing intellectual property, which is often a provisional patent application, what we call a PPA, getting into companies, which is starting to distribute your sell sheet and asking if you can show it to people. And my favorite step, which is negotiating the contract. Um, that's always a fun place to be. And finally, moving on and going on to your next idea. So I want to tell you the story of this sell sheet, which is 
my what I call my winning sell sheet, because that's when I uh, first got my first licensing deal. And this is not the exact sell sheet, because for confidentiality reasons, I can't show that sell sheet. But this is basically what it looked like. I've just swapped out the headings and the picture for something else. But if you looked at my sell sheet side by side, you'd probably be unable to tell there was any difference unless you looked very closely at them. So I wanna talk about why sell sheets matter. And what happened to me was that I had been pitching this idea to 35 companies, 34 companies. And um, the 35th company I called, we were calling companies to ask for permission at that time. The 35th company that I called, I said, I introduced myself, I said, are you accepting new ideas from outside product developers? May I send you a sell sheet? I had gotten the right person on the phone and he was he was very nice but he said you know we are a small company we don't have you know uh, infinite resources to be putting products on the market so we do look at ideas but we're you know our pipeline is already full so it's very unlikely we're going to be interested but you know if you want sell, send us your sell sheet in so I sent it in I didn't think that much about it. I was just going to cross them off the list, get another no on, on the table. And 24 hours and nine minutes later, I got an email back from that gentleman. And he said, I know I set your expectations low when we spoke on the phone, but we're interested in your idea. Can we set up a meeting? And that is the power of a sell sheet. So the other thing that I think was important was that he, they get a lot of sell sheets because his pipeline was already full. And he was obviously accepting sell sheets from anyone who called because even though they weren't looking, he said I could send mine in. And I read this very interesting statistic. On average, recruiters take just six seconds to view a resume. And when I thought about that, I remembered an experience that I had when I was a summer, looking for a summer job. I got a job at a big law firm. And one of the senior lawyers came out to the admin area and he was looking at this stack of resumes that somebody had set aside for him to look at. And, you know, these were, you know, serious people looking for legal positions or internships. And so they had obviously taken a lot of time to prepare their resume so that it would be looked at. And I saw him go through that stack of resumes just like he was dealing a deck of cards very slowly. And if he spent six seconds looking at a resume, I would have been surprised because he went through a whole stack of them, you know, just standing casually at the desk sort of on his way probably to another meeting. And I think the same is true for sell sheets, that when you're speaking to a busy marketing manager, they don't have time to spend reading every word. Often they're just gonna take a quick glance they're going to take their 10 seconds if something catches their eye then they're going to take a closer look at it but if nothing catches their eye they're just going to move on and slowly go through that stack of sell sheets and they may go through a whole stack within a very few minutes as they're on their way to another meeting so that's why a sell sheet has to grab attention very quickly now, <clears throat> Atul H. Patel, he's, a pro he's been a product manager, and he said this quote, which I captured from Stephen's book, Licensing Ideas Using LinkedIn, if the inventor hadn't had such good marketing material, I most likely would not have moved it forward. So that's another reason that we want to make sure our marketing material has the best possible presentation and the best possible information so that someone in that company is going to move it forward. So I just want to, again, um, sort of position where we're gonna be talking tonight, which is right in the middle of the 10 steps. Um, and if you're not familiar with the 10 steps, Stephen and his partner, Andrew Krauss, are gonna be doing a webinar series about those 10 steps. Um, the URL, the website address where you can sign up is right at the bottom there. And they are, you know, they're world experts. And this is the system that I use to license a product. And I just want to say that your sell sheet job, the first job is to get attention and to start a conversation going. So your sell sheet doesn't have to say everything about your product. It's not like a spec sheet. It really is just to get attention. 
and to get the conversation started. So what makes a winning sell sheet? I think of it in two different streams. Um, Stephen has got them listed as step five and step six. So I think of it in terms of the writing of the material, not just the one line benefit statement, but all of the benefits, all of the ones that you wanna put on your sell sheet. And then step six, the design of the actual sell sheet. And um, we're gonna delve much more deeply into this in a few minutes, but I just wanted to point out that in this example on the left, that is exactly the exact same copy, the exact same words as you see on the sell sheet on the right. So if my potential licensee had seen this, what I had sent on the left, and that's all they saw, they weren't that interested in accepting new products anyway, they agreed to take a look at it. Maybe he was just being polite, I don't even know. But I think if I had sent him what you see on the left, I don't think I would have gotten that email 24 hours later asking to set up a meeting. So that I think is also the importance, the writing is extremely important and the visual appeal I think is also important too. So I think sometimes how we talk about things and this is gonna become so clear uh, through the presentation that words really matter and words are very subjective, they're very, important to how it is perceived by the listener. And tonight you are the listener. So I want to ask you what words resonate for you. So step five, we talk about writing the one line benefit statement or what I like is the sizzle statement. And um, for step six, we talk about designing the marketing materials. I like saying it to myself as what words am I choosing? What words am I choosing for my audience? And how am I making it visually appealing? So as we go through tonight, there's gonna to be lots of different choices of words. And I just want you to take the words that resonate for you so that when you're writing your sell sheet, you have some you know, touchstones that ring for you and that are gonna help you in writing and designing your sell sheet. So let's start with step five, which is how to write the most important line on your winning sell sheet. and. Of course, we talk about that as the one line benefit statement. And Celeste introduced me to this wonderful, wonderful term called the WIFI sentence, which is what's in it for you. And oftentimes we don't think of the other person before we're sort of thinking about what excites us. And that is so important to think about the other person's point of view. So you want to answer this one question at the top of your sell sheet, what's in it for them? what's in it for me, you might call it the sizzle statement and you kind of have to decide how you want to think of it. But sometimes I ask, what is the biggest benefit your customer will, your customer will receive? And not just the biggest benefit, but the biggest benefit. So you want to think, why would they care? What's in it for them? And one of the ways in marketing that we talk about it is to understand the features versus the benefits. So why would I bother with your idea? What makes this meaningful to me? Why should I care about it? So let's start with some examples. Sometimes we think about a feature as an attribute or as a fact and a benefit is how we're valuing something, how it adds value. So for example, let's take a five gigabyte hard drive. Well, so what? What does that mean? If you're not familiar with computers, you probably don't know what five gigabytes means. But if instead I translated it into the value and say, that means you can put a thousand songs in your pocket as the first iPod did. Well, that means I can put my whole record collection, my whole tape collection, my whole digital music collection, a thousand songs in my pocket of one device. Well, that is amazing. So if we go on to the next example, another computer example, if I say, well, one of the facts about my product is that you have drag and drop functionality. Well, if you're not that familiar with computers, that may not mean very much to you. That doesn't really add value. It doesn't really tell me anything. But if I say it makes this program ridiculously easy to use, now you're talking. And I'd like to give a final example. Um, actually, this is from Stephen Key's product, this information label. What it did was it increased the space on medication bottles by 75% because you could actually spin 
the label and see different information. But if I'm just reading that increase is based on medication bottles by 75%, well, that, that doesn't, you know, that sounds nice, but what does it mean? Well, what it means is that you can actually put all the safety information right on the bottle itself. So if you've ever opened up some medication, you've got the bottle, you have the paper insert, and you probably don't want to read all the fine print that day when you're trying to take your medication. But say two weeks later, you notice you have a rash and you think, oh, I wonder if this is a side effect of that medication. So you want to read to see whether it is or it isn't, but you actually don't have that piece of paper because it got lost in the shuffle. But if you have the information right on the bottle, that's when it would be important for you to have all the safety information right on the bottle where it's going to be handy and convenient to go back and refer to it. So those are just a few examples about how we can describe product facts and attributes and translate into what that means for your consumer. And I think that um, what is so important about that is that it really is very dependent on language and what is communicated to that specific person that you're trying to reach. So here's um, a few other ways you can think about features and benefits what it is versus why it matters. And this is an example, dishwasher safe. Well, that's, that's a great feature, but what does that translate to? It means it's easy to clean. I can just use the dish, push it, put it in the dishwasher and never have to think about it again. It's clean, it's easy. And um, dishwasher safe is translated into a benefit. If you have, say, something like a guard, garden fertilizer, well, it's pre-measured and pre-mixed. I don't have to measure the powder and put it in water and mix it, find a container for it. So it's convenient and easy to use. If I have a big uh, cleaning device and it's got a five-foot telescopic handle, that is a fact. It has this telescopic handle. But what it means to me is that I don't need to go find a ladder. I can just use this device and I don't need anything else. And if I've ever had to clean something high up before, I know that not needing a ladder is a huge benefit to me. A final example is 100% vegan. If I'm a vegan, well, that means something to me. But if I'm looking at a product and you know, I'm looking at it very quickly. When somebody says it aligns with my values, that captures my attention because I want products that align with my values. And I think in this day and age, that's even more important to the consumer. So just to sort of sum up, we're talking benefits in terms of so what, and what does that mean? Not just what does that mean, but what does that mean to me? Because it's so very personal. And I'm just going to list a few things on the feature side and a few things on the benefit side so that you get to choose which words kind of resonate for you when you're trying to understand this concept. So what it is, that's what it is, factual, why it matters, what does that mean to me? An attribute versus an advantage, an advantage, a fact versus a feeling. And this is one that Celeste mentioned to me, what it is versus what it does. So I want to I want to sort of have a quick quick vote here, and you know while sometimes you know the list what it is versus you know um, how it adds value, sometimes that is really very black and white. But depending on what words you use, sometimes it's not so black and white. And in this example, we're going to all vote on this. I just want to say there is no right or wrong. I just want you to tell me whether you think a thousand songs in your pocket from the 2001 iPod. Does that sound to you like a feature or does that sound to you like a benefit? And I'll show you the results of the poll that I did on LinkedIn. But in the meantime, let's first vote, just say in the chat, feature or benefit. And we'll just do sort of a quick little poll here um, to see what this thinks. And I'm gonna stop screen sharing so that I can see your votes in the chat here. Okay, a few benefits coming up. Okay, a hundred, oh, okay, so it's not a hundred percent. There's someone who says they believe it's a feature. So you can see already that it is not a unanimous vote. 
There's certainly a majority of people who are voting one way, but it's not anonymous. And depending on who your customer is, really trying to guess where they're going to stand on a particular attribute or benefit is going to be really important. So I'm just going to go back to my screen so that you can see how the people voted in my poll. And even though it was a very small poll, <laughs> now, can anyone see my screen there? I don't see, I don't see it coming up, so I'm just going to try again here. Oh, dear. I don't see it, and I'm not sure why it's not coming up. Celeste had a problem with her power, and now I'm having a problem getting in and out of the chat. Okay, I think we're back up here. So in my particular poll that I did on LinkedIn, you can see 17% of the people said it was a feature and 83% said it was a big benefit. So I just wanna say again, that you really have to know your with them audience. That means know what's in it for me. Um, for, for the people who didn't think it was a feature that what wouldn't be so impactful to them, but for the people who thought it was a benefit, then a thousand songs in your pocket really did mean something. So let's go through some of what I consider the elements of a sell sheet, the essential elements. And there are just um, six. So this is the first one, we've already covered it. The sizzle statement, the one line benefit statement, it often is something that answers the question, what problem does your idea solve? So this is an example that I just wanted to give you of a sell sheet. Um, the one line benefit statement on this sell sheet is adjust your lights easily for mood or safety. And we're just gonna cover a few other examples here. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to do a quick brainstorm. So here is a product here on the left. I won't put any words to it. You can see it there in the circle. It is something that has features and benefits. So when you look at it, think to yourself, why would I buy this product? What stands out for me? If I wouldn't buy this product, would I buy it for a friend? And if I was going to give it as a gift, why would I buy it for that friend? So you'll see that what you're going to think to yourself is going to be a feature or a benefit. So just write down in the chat, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see this product? And then say whether, whether what you chose, what came to mind first was a feature or was it a benefit? And we'll just take a couple minutes to do this. And I have to stop sharing to see how your answers. Makes drinking with others more fun. Okay, yes, definitely a good benefit. Anybody else have some comments on fun cup for men with mustaches? I was surprised that when Celeste and I were talking about this, she mentioned Movember. Um, Roberto says feature. So he was thinking of something that had a feature. So let's just go back to, oh, Robert says, simply humorous, good for a laugh. Yes, I like that. I think there was one more there. Just, just, just before I go back to my screen, thinking of a special person, thinking of a special person. Yes, silly. Okay, so let's go back to the one line benefit statement and the sizzle statement. I'm just gonna share my screen again. I think, I think we're back on. Oh, 
Oh dear, maybe it is a bit dangerous to share screens because here I am having a little problem again. Okay, there we are. So when you're writing your own cell sheet, definitely I want you to consider all the things that come to your mind at first, do a big brainstorm on a paper, write down every idea you can think of, and then maybe separate them into features and benefits. Go back and look at your list, think, why would somebody buy this? Why would I buy this for a friend? Then when you've come up with the one that you think is the strongest, that's when you want to think about putting that as the headline in your cell sheet. So here's the idea that I came up with when I was thinking about this product, make him smile with a mug for mustache lovers. So that sort of incorporates both um, a, the, a mug for mustache lovers being the name of the product and make him smile was the sort of tagline to go with it. And I know some of you will probably be developing novelty ideas. And sometimes novelty ideas are the hardest to come up with in terms of features and benefits, because sometimes it is just to bring a smile to someone's face. And in this cell sheet, I chose that as the as the headline. And we're going to talk about this particular cell sheet a little bit later. But for now, that's the information about the one line benefit statement. So here's just another example um, using the vegan and the uh, aligning with values um, idea headline, very simple cell sheet. Again, just one photograph and a headline and uh, the name of the product and a few benefits, very simple. So <clears throat> the second thing is the second element after the one line benefit statement is the name of your product. And this is so, so, so important. And I didn't really realize this quite so much until I heard Ed Garten speak. He's a uh, former Hasbro executive. Um, he's worked in the industry for a huge long time. He's seen hundreds, probably thousands of cell sheets. And one thing when I heard him speak really st stood out for me, which was, he said, you know, it's crazy how many cell sheets I've seen that do not have the name of the product on the cell sheet. And he said, you know, I've been to events, people are coming up to me, they're giving me your cell sheets. And even if I really love a product, and even if I really made notes on that idea, when I get back to the office, when I'm thinking about who else I want to show this to, because, you know, I want to see- Beverly, I'm so sorry for interrupting. I just had a call from Celeste. She's lost her connection. And she said, would I please ask you to continue recording? Oh, okay, absolutely. I forget. Apologies, but I had to do it that way. Forgive me. No, no. Thank, thank you so much for letting me know. Okay. We had talked about. Okay, the meeting, please. I shall. Thank you very much, Nick. I'm so sorry. Not at all. Bye bye. Thanks. <laughs> Let's okay, continue. This is what is so great about a world class community. I mean, even though we're having technical problems, there's absolutely no way, you know, I in Vancouver could, you know, speak with you from all over the world. So we'll just try to carry on and make this work. So um, as I was saying about Ed Garten, he, he explained that when he gets back to the office, he actually can't remember them, even if he's really loved something. So he needs a cheat sheet. And what he uses as his cheat sheet is the cell sheet. So he'll go back and look at the cell sheet. And if you don't have your name of the product on it, it's going to be very hard for him to say to somebody else, hey, I saw this great product and it was the, well, I, it didn't have a name. So it's just going to make it so much easier for people to talk about your product when you name it. And that is a very critical thing to have on your cell sheet. So here's an example. We have the name of the product on this cell sheet. It is not just a tool and block set, which is descriptive, but it's a future engineer tools and block set. And that might be really important to a parent who wants to help their child develop the skills to become a future engineer. The other thing is, um, what does your product look like? And you've seen all these cell sheets which have um, photographs on them or virtual prototypes. The product that I sent on my winning cell sheet was actual virtual prototype. It wasn't even made yet. It was just something that an artist helped me create. And um, we also call the, if you're using one large picture, the beauty shot or the money shot. 
also called the hero shot. And this is an example of a cell sheet where we have a beauty shot, um, it has a picture of a very lovely young woman on it. And you can see that she is the focal point of that cell sheet. Here's another glamour shot also doesn't always have to be a person, but it does, a uh, person always captures the attention and grabs the eye. So in this case, it is it is a beautiful hair. Of course, you would have to have a person in a, in a glamour shot like this, but I just wanted to um, focus on the fact that you're gonna want the focal point of your cell sheet to be one beautiful picture of your idea. So what else is great about your idea? That's number four. Sometimes we have three to five short bullet points. Not every cell sheet needs them. I think it really does help. They don't all have to be benefits. Some of them can be benefits. Some of them can be features or can tell a little story of what it takes to how the product works. Just in a few short words that might mean something to your target audience. And so um, when we're looking at cell sheets, here's the mustache mug one again. This one has three bullet points. You'll see six mustache designs. So I would say that's a feature. Custom name imprint. So that also is a feature. And 12 colors available. That also is a feature. So we have some a, a big benefit as the headline and then three bullet points of just some extra information about the product. And when you when you're ready to do your cell sheet, you can go back to that, that big list, that brainstorming list that you created in the beginning and choose maybe the three to five other things that stand out for you and put those as your bullet points. So another thing that's important is um, the provisional patent application. We call it that intellectual property or IP status. That can also be a... Um, design patent, could be copyright, could be common law trademark, uh, not always necessary to have on a sell sheet, but um, shows perceived ownership and can really add a professional touch if that's important to your product idea. Here's an example, especially if you're selling a technical product, um, often it's good to have a utility patent. Um, they give lots of information about how to do that in the 10 steps. So obviously we're not covering it here, but just something important to remember when you're writing your cell sheet that you, if you have filed the provisional patent application, you definitely want to put that on your cell sheet. Not the number of it, but just um, patent pending would be a good thing to have. So Finally, we have to have some kind of call to actions. You have to um, be able to say, oh, is this for venturing? Is this for licensing? And you want to add your contact information. Just um, a small detail, but super important for your cell sheets. And this is an example. Um, I just wanted to point out, always, always, always proofread your contact information. Sometimes typos can, can uh, end up there even in a final draft. So before you push the send button, please always proofread your own contact information. You do not want to have your phone number wrong or your email address wrong. Um, and another thing that I just wanted to point out that, you know, Ed Garten says about sell sheets in general, open with the product, finish with yourself, and then give me five or six bullet points that will help me pitch it internally. Because this really shows that your cell sheet, the first job is to get attention, to get a conversation, but its second job is to be able to show, um, is to be able to give your potential licensee an easy way for them to show it to others. And the first thing my potential licensee said to me was, we're going to a trade show, can we send, can we show it to other people because we wanna see what the reaction is gonna be before we you know, really um, assign a contract. So that is the second job of a license, uh, second job of a sales, sell sheet, which is to make sure that it's gonna be a cheat sheet for your potential licensee. Um, this is something that I just wanted to mention um, Celeste wrote a wonderful article about sell sheets in 
the November 2020 edition of your newsletter. Um, she talks about it with the ADA formula, attention, interest, desire, and action. And um, I highly recommend that you check it out because it also gives some really great examples. So some extras are going to be um, things you don't need to put on, but sometimes really good depending on who you're sending it to. And you'll see some examples can be your website, if you have one, a product logo, uh, your social media contacts. I've even seen QR codes. And um, in the handout that you're gonna be getting later, I list a whole bunch of extras just so that you consider them. You don't have to use any of them, but if you do want to use them, they're there so you don't forget them. So we've talked about um, a lot of cell sheet elements, and here they are summarized. The four that I consider essential are, of course, the one-line benefit statement, the sizzle statement, um, the WIFI or the WIFM statement, uh, the product name, so essential so people can refer to your product as something, your product picture, and sometimes it's going to be more than one, but at least one great beauty shot. And of course, your contact information, just absolutely essential. Even if you're sending an email and it's clearly in an email in the attachment, which is your sell sheet, you're going to want to have your sell sheet because if they remove that sell sheet from the email, it's got to be easy for them to find again. So again, we're here. I just want to orient us where we are, we're talking about the writing the benefits, which, I, which some people just call the copy, which I call choosing the right words. And number six, designing marketing materials, which we're gonna talk about next, which is the design, which I think of as creating visual appeal. So what will you choose? Are you gonna to choose to hire a designer or are you gonna to try to do it yourself? So. As you can see on the left, here was all the information and the picture, and on the right was all the information and the picture with a lot more visual appeal added. And you can do one or the other, it really depends on your own time, your own budget, how much expertise you have, and one really important consideration is what your um, options are going to be for customization. If you're working with a designer, they may or not give you a source file. They may be using something like, um, a, you know, a sophisticated professional layout program that you're not going to be able to access. So you're not going to be able to customize or change that file very easily. Whereas if you do it yourself, or if you have somebody who's done it on a program that you can access and make changes to later, that is a huge consideration because when you get feedback, you're no doubt going to want to make changes or you may want to make a special sell sheet for one specific company if you know what they're particularly looking for. And so I think there are, you know, real good reasons to consider doing it yourself. You could do it from scratch or I think what makes it easier is using a template and I have some that I sell and you're going to also get one um, as part of your bonus tonight. So I just want to go quickly over the things, whether you do it yourself or whether you hire a designer, you're going to have to think about certain things. Even if you do use a designer, you're going to have to give them some information like your product picture. So say you had the choice between the picture on the left, which is just a beauty shot, or the beauty shot with the picture on the right with a person holding up the actual product. Oftentimes it's a really great idea to use a person, to use a picture of a person using your product, just makes the product come alive in some ways. I didn't do that on mine because I didn't have a great model and I only had this virtual prototype. So that's the one I went with, but that's one of the decisions you're gonna have to make as the inventor before you send something off to your designer. Here's an example where another, um, just a single beauty shop, nobody using it. Um, again, a single beauty shop, just the soap, um, more than one bar. So that was an interesting choice um, that you know, you're gonna have to make as the uh, inventor. And if you have um, more of a story to tell. So if you want to show the different colors, for example, in this cell sheet, we have the beauty shot. You can see that 
the product is the fashion ball, which is the accessory, obviously. And we want to show that it comes in different colors so that we have four other little um, pictures at the bottom here which show that. So we call this kind of sell sheet a single beauty, beauty shot with detailed pictures. Here's another example of a single beauty shot. And in this cell sheet, we kind of have a little storyboard. So it's going to be, you know, soft mood lighting, medium neutral lighting, and bright safety lighting. So we're kind of telling a story as to how this product can be used in addition to the one bigger beauty shot at the top. Um, here's another example of a storyboard. Obviously, it's got um, just uh, where the product can be used for home, for travel, for school. If you're doing something, it could be something for a dorm room. You kind of just guest room. You want to kind of give the user some ideas right off the bat as to where their product can be used. And you can do that with some storyboard pictures. Finally, another style of cell sheet is the before and after. Here's one for our, our garden product. And um, depending on your product and the, and, and the beauty shot you take, you're going to find that it fits into one format or another better. For example, if you're using a person, obviously that's a profile, you know, you could be a profile. So it's going to be up and down. You're going to want one um, sort of more portrait orientation. If you're shooting something wide, um, if your product is a wide um, picture, you're going to want something that's, you know, kind of shows the landscape vista. So you're going to want something in landscape orientation. And that also is something that you're going to have to think about when you're taking your pictures, when you're giving them to your designer, or when you're doing your cell sheet yourself, just a huge consideration as to how you're going to be using the space. So here's um, some examples where we've, where we've used landscape orientation. They use the screen real estate better. That's why some designers really like it. And here's a couple more. But obviously for some things, um, you know, it would have been hard to show this long hammer in a landscape orientation. And, you know, for a lamp, tall lamp, we kind of wanted to use a portrait orientation for that. Um, for people, profiles, picture shots, um, portrait style. And here's two examples of that. So another thing that you're going to be considering is the style and whether, again, whether you're working do it yourself or whether you're hiring a designer, you want to kind of give them some ad advice, some instruction. Is this going to be something friendly, something formal, something dynamic and busy, or something more peaceful, something playful? And those are just words that you're going, words again, that you're going to choose to kind of explain explain to your designer or to yourself, if you're the designer, what the basic look and feel is gonna be when somebody just takes a quick glance at your cell sheet. Another consideration are the colors you're gonna use. And this is something you as the inventor are gonna to have to research. What are the colors used in your industry? So for example, for children's toy products, often very colorful, contrasted to this more natural, organic looking, earth toned, vegan soaps. Another consideration, again, for you or the designer is what fonts they're gonna use. Do you want something classic and more formal? Or do you want something fun or something more informal? And your font is really gonna express you know, a feeling unto itself, even without the pictures, fonts can sort of have a language of expression all their own. Um, for uh, font pairing, sometimes you're going to want to use more than one font, sometimes two is enough, but sometimes something contrasting like this one you see at the bottom, these look quite nice together, Julia Sans one and Archivo Nero. So I know we've covered a lot of information. So I just wanted to kind of recap a little bit of it here. We have the information, which are all these ones at the top, one to seven. 
Um, the essentials have, have asterisks beside them, and you're going to get this all in the handout, um, so you don't have to worry about actually putting it all down, because I know it's quite a lot of information. And then the visual appeal, which we talked about just now, the page orientation, landscape or portrait, the overall look and feel, the style, the colors, the fonts and the font pairings, all of this is going to be mentioned in the little handy checklist that's going to be part of your handout. So I know that, you know, during your first cell sheet, if um, you haven't done them before, it can be daunting. Maybe even your 10th cell sheet might be kind of a struggle. And I wanted, before we close, I wanted to mention this wonderful quote that I got from James Berry, who's somebody I met on LinkedIn. And I highly recommend uh, joining LinkedIn if you have the opportunity to do that, because it's a wonderful place to meet people and make contacts and licensing, especially people that you want to pitch to. So he says, wherever you, whenever you do anything new, you are going to be terrible. And for me, that gave me permission to do things that weren't perfect the first time. So he says your first hundred posts, your first hundred videos, and I would add your first hundred cell sheets. So instead of worrying about quality, just focus on getting past a hundred. Most don't get that far. And he says, good luck. And so I also want to offer you good luck and more than good luck. I want to offer you some support, which is basically everything that we talked about today. You're gonna to get a 46 point checklist. Um, it's sort of color coded the way that we saw things today. So you'll see the main points, the main things that you need and um, all of the check, smaller sub checklist um, things that you're gonna consider. You're not gonna use all of them for your cell sheet. In fact, you may only use a few, but everything is gonna be there so that you don't forget anything when it comes to planning. You're also going to receive a Canva template. Um, you do need a free Canva account, but even in the free accounts, I've actually never had more than a free account. And all the cell sheets that you saw today were created on Canva. And um, the, this one of the hammer, if you have a single beauty shot item that you want to show in portrait style, um, just replace everything that you see on the sell sheet with your own information. So once you come up with your one line benefit statement or your sizzle statement, you can put that in the headline area, drag and drop your beauty shot into the uh, little box in the middle here. And you can see where the product name can go. Uh, you can see patent pending is listed, available for licensing and contact information. Um, you can see there are very few elements but you can actually just replace all of them with your own information. So all of that is your in your mini cell sheet toolkit. And Celeste is going to be sending you out this PDF, which has all the information you need. It's going to give you the link to the checklist and the um, template. You must use the free coupon code um, so that you get this free. Uh, the coupon code is III underscore bonus. Um, this is an offer that expires um, on midnight Monday SAS tea time, and it is only for live attendees. So this is your special thanks for coming to this um, workshop today. Hello, I want to. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, it's Nick. Here, I don't know whether you're seeing my my picture. Yes, I'm I taking do. over from Celeste has asked me to take over because of her problem. Okay. Um, so you you you're kind of wrapping up. Um, how are you for timing? Uh, do you are you taking any questions, or is your time pretty tight? Because we are up, our time is up. It's entirely up to you. Um. I'm I'm good. I'm just I just have a couple more slides. I'll just finish off with, and yeah, we could take a few questions after that. Yeah, yeah. Please carry on. Okay. So I just want to say yobonga. I think that means thank you. Uh, thanks for your interest um, in cell sheets. Um, all of the cell sheets that you saw, I I will be selling on my own Gumroad store. So um, you'll find information about that in the package that you're going to be receiving. And I just want to say again, goodbye. It was wonderful to be here in South Africa my first time. Hamba Kakli.
I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I have been practicing it. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again. It's been a real treat to be here. And with that, yes, I think we could take a few questions. So, Beverly, so, uh, so, again, I'm, uh, I can't, I can't see. Oh, there, I'm getting most people on screen. Could I, if anybody has a question, could I ask you to just intercept it because I don't have control from where I am now. I don't have control of the of the screen. So, could it, could people indicate by hand, and and Beverly can just take your question. Oh, I see. Michelle has a question. But I can't. Yeah, I, 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 I Beverly, um, I always have questions. Great presentation. Um, I was just wondering your opinion because um, with regards to orientation, um, I saw that you actually had a lot of horizontal and I know with InventRight, they, they kind of push um, the vertical and I had started horizontal ones thinking that they were better that way and they kind of steered me in the other direction. Do you find it actually makes a difference horizontal or vertical? Well, I think if you look at a Screen, and it really depends on who your viewer is going to be in part, because if you look at a screen, a lot of them are horizontal, like my presentation was today, mm -hmm. use a screen real estate way better, um, you know, but it really depends on your photo and how it orients on the screen. You know, I don't know if it's six to one, half a dozen or the other. I think a lot of designers okay. prefer landscape. So, um, you know, I really think how you lay it out on what your orientation is is kind of more important than the orientation itself. So I'm not sure if that helps. I hope that gives yeah. you some. So I say, you know, if you're comfortable and you find you have great cell sheets with landscape, just keep using them. Okay. Th yeah. Thanks. Um, I just wanted a, a professional opinion on on orientation if it actually made a difference, but it's just a matter of what presents better, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for coming today. Happy to be here. <laughs> Um, where is the link to get the checklist? Um, Harry asked that in the chat. Um, Harry, it's going to be coming via Celeste. I, if you do not have your um, email in the chat, please put it in the chat so she can email you the information as to where to get the link to the checklist and the template. Any, any, any other questions for anybody? Seeing if there's a. I'm, I'm looking for hands. I don't see any hands going up. Oh, great. Th thanks for Robert and Harry for putting your um, email addresses in the chat. I'm just going to make sure that I save them for Celeste. Is, is the presentation also available? Um, uh, Celeste said that it's going to be put up on the III website and eventually it'll get out into YouTube, I think. Um, okay. The, the bonus kit is only available to live participants. So thanks everybody for participating live. That was the incentive and reward for coming. Uh, but the actual presentation I think will be posted and Celeste will let us know. She'll probably post it on LinkedIn also. Great, thanks. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> thank Does you. anybody Darren. else? Thank you, Darren, so much for your, for your uh, comments. Susan? Is it? This is an outstanding presentation. I've loved every minute of it. and. Uh, I've actually am started to use Canvas and I am actually using Bev's templates. And I, I just want to say, I find them extremely helpful. So thank you, Bev. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> I think it solves, the pro it solves the problem of facing the terror of a blank sheet, because at least it gives you some place to start. And even if you change everything on it, at least it's given you a way to get going. So I think that's another value of templates, even if you get something completely different at the end. And I'll just say that the Canva templates are 100% customizable. You can change colors, fonts, pictures, everything. And as well, they're reusable so that you can use them as many times as you want. So if you have, you know, 10 product ideas and, you know, each of them have their own beauty shot, you can just create 10 um, cell sheets that are completely different, but using the same template. So that's also another value of, of using templates. Um, lots of great thanks. Uh, thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Harry. If there I wanted, are... I wanted... I wanted to thank you also for a great presentation, Beverly. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Is it Roberto? Roberto, yes, Roberto. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And where are you from? 
I'm, uh, I'm an Italian national, but I'm a resident in France, and I'm living in South Africa for the last two years. Oh, okay. Thank a you. little so, complicated. <laughs> so it's so fascinating <laughs> for me to, to uh, be with people from all over the world, and I'm sorry Celeste couldn't be here, but we had talked about this potentiality because she told me that South Africa does have some unexpected blackouts sometimes. Oh, yes. So, yes, so I just want to say to everyone, thanks so much again for coming. I think if there's no other questions for now, we'll call it a night or in Canada, I'm calling it a morning because it's it's not even 9 a.m. here. Um, it was wonderful to see you. And I think as closing, I'm just going to say more Beverly, uh, Beverly, my, I've been tasked by Celeste to just thank you. I didn't introduce myself to everybody out there. I'm Nick Neil Boss. I'm from South Africa in Port Elizabeth. For what that, where, if you if you possibly know where that is, I'm a member of the Triple I, the Institute of Inventors and Innovators. Beverly, um, yeah, you, she's Celeste is quite right. We do have frequent blackouts, as we call them, and it happened just to pick on her tonight. Yeah, tonight, as always, yeah, you, it was just a wealth of information. And uh, I think we all just realize what value we get out of this from people like yourselves. So thank you for your, your valued time. For me, what it meant is I've always been terrified by clutter and documentation and lots of writing. What you've conveyed to me personally tonight, and I'm speaking very subjectively, is that simplicity says everything. Impact, everything I saw tonight just said, oh, wow. Somebody else kind of thinks like I like to think. And most of my, many things that put me off in my life in terms of products and things I see is there's too much to absorb. So I'd rather move on. And um, I just value the simplicity of what you've said tonight. And I hope I've summed that up um, correctly. Um, just one, one small thing has always interested me because I've been this route. Um, the appearance of your IP or your PP, uh, your provisional patent, how important is that? Because there seems to be a lot of split thought on that with regard to speed to market and whether you should spend that sort of money, et cetera, et cetera. I wonder if you had a view on that. Yes, and my view is the provisional patent application, while that gives you the opportunity to say patent pending on a sell sheet, and that does give more of a, you know, a professional look, even a perceived ownership, as Stephen Key likes to say, it is totally dependent on your potential licensee. So often it's a good thing to ask when you're asking if, you know, in an initial conversation to say, you know, how important is IP to you? you know, just doesn't matter to us, or they'll make it clear that it really matters to them, even if they don't advertise it in their products. I'm just working with someone now, and I, you know, I'm actually involved in um, part of their marketing and, you know, their selling, and I said, do you want, they have a patented um, internal mechanism for their product, so I said, oh, well, don't you want that on the uh, package? He said, no. He said, we don't want it on the package. He said, it's important for us to have a patent on this, and we'll certainly go after people if they try to, um, uh, you know, steal some of this IP, but he says, we you know, we do not want to put it on the package. And that's sort of what typically people are doing in our industry at the moment. So that surprised me. Um, but, you know, that's why it's so important to know who your audience is. And in this case, they didn't want to have it on their information, even though it was important to them. So they were, in some ways, it wasn't really a mixed message that they were giving to me, but it was a mixed message in terms of it was important to them, but they didn't want to announce it. So when you're speaking with your potential licensee, they're going to say to you, you know, we don't care about it. It is speed to market. We're just going to get out there before anybody else. And um, that's all that matters to us. And then other companies are going to say, no, this does matter to us. You know, we not only want, um, you know, a provisional patent application, we want to know if you've got a, you know, a um, gone the next step and actually had one 
you know, that you have a number for. So one that's been issued. So, you know, I think that's why you're getting so many different opinions because different companies and different industries have different opinions. So it's not a uniform answer. So that that's, yeah, that's the best answer I can give you, which is, you know. Thank ask. you. Thank you. Makes a lot of sense. Awesome. And thank you so um, much for your comments. Yeah. Beverly, again, thanks to everybody for participating. And um, again, thanks to you. And, and thank you so much for the toolkit that you're sending everybody via Celeste or however we do get it. Greatly appreciated. And thank you for gracing us with your presence. Really it appreciate it. It was definitely my pleasure. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, thank Good night you. Beverly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Nick, can you? <laughs> yes, I got you. Can you stop the recording or am I supposed to do that? I believe that's you. I don't, I don't have control of that. Oh, okay. Then I'll do it. That's great. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Good night.